short video very short video and uh, this is simply how to export an image let's say that I wanted to uh, print this one off um, a lot of the other logic simulators allow you to produce JPEG images which I, I, I prefer the, this one only does PNG so you say file you say uh, export and you say export uh, PNG image so we'll say export PNG image so one bit ALU we'll save it and we will overwrite it and then we'll go in and take a look at it So here is the uh, one bit ALU. We will open this. We will open it. And you can uh, pull it over here. And this is the image. This is. Well, you can actually uh, put this into a document and expand this. The, the uh, quality is not too bad. But again, it only produces a, a .png images. So that's just how you export uh, uh, images in uh, Digital Logic. Very short video. And uh, on to the next one. Uh, a little bit more complex one. Now we want to really design something just moderately complex and uh, this kind of illustrates uh, all the features of uh, the digital logic simulator. Uh, I want to do a 5-bit binary counter using uh, JK flip-flops so it uh, counts from 0 to 31 in binary uh, using a clock circuit. Um, developed this over uh, a couple of days and I want to show you the design process that we go through. Well the first thing we want to look at is the uh, uh, what a JK flip-flop does. So here is actually a, a JK flip-flop and let me reduce the uh, size here so we can actually see the whole thing. So the idea of a JK flip-flop is to hold the state of a bit. In other words um, we want to be able to, when we set a 1 to a 1, we want to keep it there. It's kind of like memory. This portion right here is actually called an RS flip-flop. And it's a, a set and reset. And then by putting the J and K on the end of it, we can actually trigger it and use a clock input to say only, only change this on a clock input. So a JK flip-flop is, is by its very nature clock. Now this is the way that the JK flip-flop works. The clock comes in and it has a pulse and the change is always made on a clock pulse on a rising edge. If I put J, if a J and K are both zero there is no change to the state at all. If J is one and K is zero then Q is set to one and Q not obviously is zero. If K is 1 and J is 0, then Q0 is set to 1 and Q is set to actually 0. Here is the fun part. If both J and K are 1, what it does is it toggles Q and Q0 on a clock pulse. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is exactly what we wanted to do as a counter. So using that feature, Let's go down and look at the truth tables for a 5-bit counter. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to go through this sequence, uh, all zeros, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, at every clock pulse, and then go back to the beginning and start over. Well, look at X0, and you'll look at X0, and you'll see it says 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So what's going to happen is on a clock pulse, we're going to change X0 back and forth using that JK flip-flop. So we're going to put 1 in both J and K and a clock pulse and Q will come out 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. It's exactly what we want. Now then, look here and we see that X1 is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And what we see there is that whenever X turns a 1 and the next clock pulse is a 1 what we do is we turn X on twice and 0 0 and then twice and you see that it matches the 
state of x0. Likewise for x2. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the previous um, use the previous signal from each flip-flop to and the results of the previous uh, uh, the bits for instance right here we see that the one on x3 turns one when all three of the previous bits turn on one and we're going to use that to design our circuit okay well, what does that circuit look like well let me pull over a little bit better picture here to show you here is what it looks like and I, I drew this out and, and I always draw them out first so here are flip-flops right and we see that by putting a one into the first flip-flop that Q coming out is going to be the uh, trigger and we make that circuit go down and that is X0 and we make that input into the next one and this JK right here is X2 and we get the output of it now what we have to do is we have to take the output of that into an AND gate from the current flip-flop and the previous and when both of these turn ones then we take X3 and uh, X3 turns to 1 to or X2 excuse me and so on and so forth until we get to the end alright let's build that circuit and let's let's test it out it's going to take a little while to do it but let's uh, let's build it out I'm going to set this over to the side so I can see it you can I can I'll close this down and here we have a blank circuit well, let's start through and doing this all right components the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in plexer and we're going to put uh, excuse me we're going to pull in flip flop and we're going to put on a JK flip flop and right there it is all right boom okay I'm going to pull in a clock okay the clock is uh, right there it is in clock input and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, set the clock and the clock uh, start in real time and we're going to set it at five we can do as many ones we want but that's okay five and we're going to connect the clock up to there we're going to have an input input right here and what we're going to do here is we're going to set the input to, to that and they're both going to go the same one mm -hmm. now let's look at our design I'm going to bring it back over so there's we have that and then we have the uh, uh, first part right there now let's let's go ahead I need one two uh, four more flip-flops. Let's go ahead and pull those out. So I'll put flip-flops right here. This is going to be fairly close. Uh, but these we like to space out a little bit more because we're going to put AND gates up there at the top. So two, three, four, and then five. Okay, so there's our five. Let's look at our uh, design right here. So we've got those in here. Now I need three AND gates. Okay, components, AND gates. I'm going to put an AND gate up here and an AND gate right there. Two inputs are fine, so that's okay. Okay, that's very good. Let's go ahead and wire up the clocks. Uh, uh, I'm going to connect it right here and bring it down and just run a wire all the way over to here. And I'm going to connect up all the clocks. So everybody's got a clock impulse now. Here are the clocks. All right, okay, let's bring our design back over. Okay, so we've got our clocks in there. Uh, let's go ahead and wire up the, uh, the uh, AND gates. Okay. So what we have in the AND gates is a Q here will go input to the next one. It will also go as input into this AND gate as does this output. Okay. 
this will be input to the next one. This is output goes into the next gate as does this queue because uh, this let's see um, this AND gate only turns positive to one when all the previous bits are turned on to one and likewise this one too this one only turns to one when all three of the previous bits are turned on to one we'll go ahead and connect this up. And this one, whoops, can't move it. And then finally, that one goes down there. Okay, now what I've also got to do is I've got to uh, connect this up and make sure that the uh, uh, both bits. on that one and this one are going to that because we wanted to trigger that flip-flop to toggle it which is uh, what we want to do Oops. there we go so is that everything that's good I think we've got that done now the only thing we have left to do is to uh, produce the output Alright, so uh, we're going to do LEDs here. So we have the LED right here. And we're going to uh, rotate it 90 degrees. Nope, oh, 270. Okay. Advance. Oops. There we go. It's up. And I'm going to copy that and paste it four more times. All right. Now, easy enough to connect them up. This uh, uh, you'll notice that uh, we never use Q not coming out of the gate. There's really no reason to. So we're going to take this. Uh, this is actually our first far right bit. Okay, this is the next one, and again, spacing is pretty important here, so you don't run out of uh, space. I may have to uh, change them here. We'll see. I think I'll be okay. And then this is our next bit and then finally all right bet all right all right well let's see uh, simulation we're going to start the simulation and you'll see that the clock is pulsing right here all right but nothing's happening because I'm going to turn this bit on and you'll see that our counter has now started all right, and let's look at it. Make sure it works. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me uh, stop the simulation here. Stop the simulation, and I'm going to change the frequency to uh, less. I'm going to change it to one. Okay. okay. So simulation. We're going to start the simulation, and there we go. All right. So let's change this to one, and when we trigger it to one, we can see one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Everything looks good. So there is our five-bit counter using JK flip-flops. Uh, lots of fun. Lots of fun. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I enjoyed making it. Uh, press like if you found it useful and uh, consider subscribing to my uh, channel. Have a good day.